Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Age of Wonders Planetfall by Paradox Interactive, Hobby World, and Arcane Wonders. This is a two to six player game. It takes roughly 30 minutes to play and is for ages 13 and up. And in the game Planetfall, you are basically a group of survivors traveling back to the center of the universe to basically maintain a colony. Uh, you're going to go from one planet to the next, all together seven different planets, to gather new militia, fight against other units, gain technology and pickups and supplies while traversing the inwards of the galaxy. At the end, hopefully you've completed enough objectives to gain enough status, aka victory points, to be the highest victory point, aka status, of the different survivors allocated for the game. Will you complete the task and fulfill your destiny? Find out in the game Age of Wonders Planetfall. Let's talk about the setup and of course how to play and my review. To begin set up for the game Age of Wonders Planetfall, the first thing you're going to need to do is take out the main game board, unfold it, and place it from one down to six so that it's facing you guys. Then you're going to need to deal out a number of cards depending on the number of players. If you're playing with four or less, then you're going to do a four, three, and two setup. And you're going to take those cards from the planet deck one. Each of the decks have a number which will each be individually shuffled and set aside for the game. Once you have dealt out the 4-3-2 combination of Planet 1 cards, you'll set aside the rest of them, you won't use them for this game. You're also going to take one of these goal sheets here. There are a variety of them. You can simply choose one at random and place it above the main game board. Then, based on each player's uh, initiative level, you will assign them a slot from the categories on the far right hand side of the game board. There's one, two, three, all the way down to six. Whatever your influence number is, that is how far down you go on the board. So the lowest influence goes to the top and it follows suit. After you have placed your markers in these slots here, you're then gonna go ahead and take the four cubes given to you for your color. If you don't know what color your character is, which can be possible, look on the top right hand side of your game board, it will tell you what ship you use. And from there, the ship will tell you the color of cubes that you use. Place each of the markers on the spaces that are underlined and marked in white for your experience, strength, and energy, along with victory points, which always starts at zero. After you have your ship marker on one of the numbers on the side of the board and all four of your tokens or markers placed on the spaces needed, then you're basically ready to begin the game. Make sure all the rest of the decks are set aside, which you will be utilizing in the game. Set aside any characters you're not utilizing. And of course, remember they are front and back, so you can choose either abilities that you'd like. And of course, any goal sheets you're not using can be set aside as well. All right, pick a first player by... You know, look at the first player by looking at who is number one, and they're gonna start the game off. Planetfall is done over seven rounds, and in each round there are five phases. When you first start the main round of the game, you're gonna ignore the first two phases and proceed down from there, but after the first planet slash round, you will proceed with all five for the rest of the game, except for the end of the game, at the very last round, you'll ignore the last phase. Phase one is discovery. It's where you're basically gonna be putting out all of the cards for the new planet down on the board, following the number of players you have assigned. In this case here, I'm playing two, so I've got four, three, and two cards. They're gonna go in these slots here. Um, and then after you've placed them down, you'll simply move to the next phase, which is an income phase. Income's pretty simple. Whatever gives you income is gonna give you income. Is it cards on your field? Uh, is it your specific character itself? Whatever that might be, you'll gain income. And income can come in a variety of ways. It can come in strength or energy. Um, after you've gained all of your income, you're gonna move to exploration. There are two parts to exploration. So it's ex it's gonna be the um, basically the discovery, the income, explore one, explore two. When you explore, this is the main part of the game. You're gonna take whosoever marker is at the very top of this track here, and they will go first, placing it on one of the cards or operations on the main area. When they place, then the next player is going to have an opportunity to take theirs and place it anywhere they would like as well. Once everybody is placed, that will end the exploration phase as long as everybody purchases the cards that they have been placed on. So in this case here, Blue is going first. They placed it on a technology card called Unshackling. They're going to need to pay the cost and then they will take the card and they will place it adjacent to their main game board. This is where you're going to be building your tableau, getting new cards each and every round. Then green is going to have the opportunity to pay or gain the benefit of whatever space. 
After you go ahead and gain the cards that you placed the, uh, your, your markers on, you'll place back your character marker on the track. And the way that works is the person who places farther up and to the left than anybody else is the person who's going to activate their card first after placement, and they're the one who are going to go on the top. Or if you go farther to the bottom and farther to the right, you are going to go last. And a good example for this is if I am blue and I'm going first and I place my marker on this pickup item, which is in row three on the first column, and then green picks row two on the second column, then we're gonna go from top to bottom, left to right, and we'll check until we find the first person to place on the card. Then they will take the card, pay for it and put it over where they need it to go. And then the next player is going to take their card and once again, rinse and repeat the cycle placing your markers up on the board. That's how you determine turn order for the entire game. Then you're gonna take another exploration action. You will place on a card and or operations area, and then you are going to fulfill it and gain whatever benefits that the card might have for you, placing your marker back on the track here, thusly changing the turn order for the game. There are a variety of different cards in the game that uh, you're going to need to know about. So let's go ahead and cover a few of them, or all of them, I should say. Uh, the first one is Pickup. This is a yellow looking card. It's in the top left hand corner. The name of the card is in the middle and what planet it's under is on the far top right. So this is planet one. There's no other pickups like this in any other planets. On the left hand side, this is the cost and this will be the cost for every card. Uh, sometimes they'll have alternate costs, but the top portion of it will tell you what type of cost it is and how much of that it's going to cost or give you based on the row it is in, the row being the operation level. If this card was an operation level one, it's gonna give you two energy. So as opposed to costing you anything, this specific card, the pickups, are going to give you value. If it was in row two, it would be two energy, and if it was in row three, it would give you three energy. Um, additionally, with pickup cards, as opposed to gaining this in in energy instantly and just setting it aside on your game board, you can annex the location. When you annex a location, you do not gain the initial the energy points, and instead you'll take the card, you'll turn it over, and place it down on your side of the field. That is going to give you an amount of energy during your income phase. This is one way you can generate income uh, during every single round. And so those are the two options with that one. You can either instantly gain a reward of energy or you can flip it over and for the rest of the game, you'll gain that amount of energy. And it tells you right next to the little batteries here on the top left and right hand side when you flip the card over. The next one is locations. Uh, this is going to be the same thing. It'll tell you what planets they're on, the name, the color. It'll also tell you the cost. In this case, it'll have energy costs. So it'll either be two, two or one. However, this one has an additional cost or a separate cost, I should say. Instead of just buying it out, you can spend strength instead of the listed number of uh, energy for this card here if you'd like. And when you do, you'll gain the benefits. This one here is going to be two victory points, an experience, and over here is going to be pairs. Each of the locations has multiples of their types, and whenever you pair them together, you're going to gain the bottom right-hand side listed benefit for both cards. Then you have troopers to deal with. These are cards you just simply fight. It's going to have a number of experience required and strength required, and it functions the same way all the rest of the cards do as far as where they're located and what their costs are. But sometimes you can actually engage in a treaty with them, in which case, if, as long as you have enough experience, you can spend energy instead of strength. Um, the only difference on the top here is if you do the first portion, which is fighting, and you don't have enough experience, you can actually trade in strength even if you don't have the experience. So if you have two experience, if you need two experience and two strength, but you only have one experience, you can spend three strength in order to defeat the card and gain the bottom below benefits. Four victory points, and then based on what you chose to do, truce or fight, will give you energy or strength, and then you'll also gain an experience from these guys. The last one here is going to be the purple. This is the technology. This will simply cost you energy based on where it's located, and you're going to get a passive uh, bonus throughout the game. This one here says that all your landmark cards will cost you one less. For each time you collect a pair of identical landmarks, you'll also gain an energy. And it'll give you victory points. When you gain victory points, you will move this marker around your game board. Whenever you gain more than 50, you'll take a 50 marker, and when you go over 100, you'll flip this over to the 100 marker. Spending experience or gaining experience or energy or strength is going to be utilizing these trackers here. You may never go into a space if you cannot afford it. You must pick a space that you can choose to take. And, all, and if nothing else is available to you, you can at least take the operation slots.
Speaking of which, let's talk about the operation slots. Operation slots are going to give you operation points, which you can then convert into victory points, strength, and experience. And there's a cost, one for one or two for one. You'll get more based on the level that you choose, but remember the farther down you go, the less likely you're gonna go first for the next round or for the next exploration phase. So that's, that's the main meat and potatoes of the game. Player places, next player places, conduct the left to right, uh, top to bottom search of the cards and pay for them and then rinse and repeat. Then you'll move on to the next phase of the game, which is migration. You'll take every card that's left over from here, which means that in a two player game, only four cards should be taken and you will place out the new planets. So in this case here, I'd go to planet level, level two and I would take all of these cards away. And now we're gonna go and rinse and repeat for the second planet. This deck hopefully better be shuffled and flipping over these cards here. And then we will once again rinse and repeat. And we'll do this for each of the seven different planets. At the end of the seventh phase, we're gonna ignore the migration because we won't need to migrate anymore. And we're just simply going to check to see who has the most points. We'll look at this template here and we'll assign victory points accordingly. These could say something like whoever has the most experience gains this many number of points, whoever has the most pickups, et cetera, et cetera. There's three different unique ones on the statuses here. You'll also go ahead and check your victory points here to see where you're currently at and any cards that will supply you with victory points. The planets five, six, and seven all have cards that give you bonus victory points from the technology cards at the end of the game. So it's a good way to score additional points to kind of push yourself up just that little bit, that little inch in order to secure your victory. That's the game. Go through this uh, seven rounds. Whoever has the most points based on their board cards and anything else is the winner of the game, Planetfall. Okay, what do I think? Planetfall is a tableau placement game. It is a light worker placement game and you are using and allocating resources to the cards that you choose. This is a quick game. There's only seven rounds, which might seem like a lot, but a round is gonna consist of you taking your marker, placing it on a card, paying for the card, doing that again, and then just clearing the board and putting new cards back down. Uh, it is pretty simple as far as games go. You're, I would say this is like a medium to light, like medium light game, because it's, it's once you understand the concept of the rules and how each card works, it's all about choosing the path of victory you want to go down. Now, of course, you're not gonna get to see every card from the planets and there are unique cards for each planet that kind of work together in tandem with other ones. Trying to create a goal and gather the correct cards is gonna be important for you and deciding what path you want to go down. Uh, not only that, but also you're going to have your character with an ability like Burka Katla is an Amazon and she may process any card as though it was level three. So even if she's play, placing on her, her marker on a level one card, she can take the level three bonus, which in this case is four energy as opposed to three. So there's going to be a slight benefit for her for the entire game. Whereas Claudius Proton is an assembly worker and each time that he claims a military card, he just gains plus two more energy. So whenever he fights Mr. Roy 2 or a Hopperhound Blade Maw, then he's going to simply take the bonuses plus an additional two, two energy, which is pretty useful as well. All of these guys provide their own unique passive effects throughout the game and they have A sides and B sides. And I'd say that one side is usually more complica complicated than the other, but it's not always true. Uh, some of the characters are definitely more interesting uh, as far as what you can do and what you can utilize them with. That also being said, there are these specific cards here. These each are gonna have unique requirements throughout the game, whether it be to gain points if you have more military than any other player, or whether it be something like gaining points if you have more experience or have, the, have exactly 10 experience, or points for each military that you have left, or strength that you have left, or energy that you have left. There's a large variety of different ways in which points can be scored throughout this game, and not, in, not just withholding the cards that you can gain throughout the game quality of the game, and artwork, and all that good stuff. The game is really well designed as far as the art goes. It looks like you're in space. The planets are wonderful. They're beautiful. They remind me of the unique different types of planets I would find in a solar system. And even though I don't know how you would land on a few of these planets because, well, they look a little fiery or a little cold, um, I guess these guys are very technologically advanced. Uh, regardless, though, the planets are great. I love the feeling of being in space, and this game puts me in there. It makes me feel like I'm playing Starcraft as well with the different types of pickups and locations that you can annex to gain energy. 
protons, no, what is it, a uh, Vespian gas, uh, as well as the different units you'll find on the different planets to deal with and fight, and they kind of, each planet has its own kind of feel to it. Um, I wish the player boards were double thick, I wish that the pieces were less likely to move. If you push a cube in one direction or another, it can like block your, you can forget where your pieces are, like, oh, oh shoot, where was I again? Oh, I was at 14 and 18, uh, that's great. <laughs> that, like, things like that can happen. Um, and as well as, of course, I, I like the main game board. It's just that the things are just a little thicker. However, I do like the pieces here. These are nice, the little wooden uh, cubes and spaceships and the design for determining what ship goes with which board. And that indicates what color makes them just having a little bit of graphic design, a little bit of explanation. And I also wouldn't mind if there was at least one or two player cards. References to explain how the rounds work, just as a kind of reminder. It's pretty simple, light game, so I'm not gonna knock it off too hard for that, but I always like to see references, even if it's just one card, so that somebody who has played the game and wants to explain the game has that, as opposed to like digging through the rule book each and every time they have to play the game. Like, what's that? Okay, just for little basic pieces of information. Regardless though, still. Yeah, good. I like the idea that you can utilize operations and pickups when you're kind of out of options or out of resources, and then you can choose to go for either high amounts of resources plus like victory points by defeating military units. You can go the kind of combo route if you want when you want to deal with the technology cards. These guys are going to give you passive abilities, passive benefits, and you can choose to maybe make a slow burn as opposed to a quick and hit them hard and get as much as you can. Locations are kind of a way in which you can pair them up if you have like a synthesis network and then you get another synthesis network. You're going to get double bonuses for these guys, but you have to make sure that you, that you prioritize the specific cards that grant you pairings. And of course, they also just give you victory points and experience on their own. But yeah, it, it, the, the other thing is operations. Operations is kind of a last ditch effort. If you don't have any cards that you want, you want to pick the lowest, the highest most of the time to gain as many points as you can to then trade them in for victory points, strength, and experience. Sometimes it might just need one more experience in order to get to 10 to get those seven victory points. That's where operations and or pickups can come in handy. Income is also very beneficial, but not as useful at the end of the game, especially on round six and seven. It's almost unimportant to get the income aspect of cards because you're going to need no more income. And the game knows it. It tells you like, here's a card that gives you seven income because whatever, you know, like you max yourself up. But there are resources. There are cards that will give you benefits for having those type of resources um, and of saving them at the end of the game. This game reminds me of It's a Wonderful World, the game about tableau management. That game's more of a drafting game. This game is more of a worker placement game, but they fit in the same type of niche. Now, of course, this one takes place in Planetfall. This is where you're a group of survivors trying to, well, survive and, and uh, visit the inward planets. But there is a very like similar complexion that these both these games have, and they're both very enjoyable. The only one really negative I have about this game, my wife loves this game. Uh, my only thing was I really wish there was even more cards in the planet decks, uh, especially when you're playing with a lot more players. That way it can be mixed up if you play again, otherwise you'll see the kind of the same cards. Um, it's not a terrible thing. There's a lot of different variations that provide you with each of the planets, and it's kind of meant to be low resource management and like hard choices, so I don't necessarily fault it for that. But I'm hoping that if this game does well enough, maybe they'll see some expansion content for it to give it even more uh, of a of more chunkiness to the game. Um, as it stands though, it is a fun game. It was a very enjoyable game. We played this on our live stream and really, really enjoyed it. It's quick and it's simple to explain. And if you like Planetfall, this is an easy pickup. If you really like this video game, then this is a really cool game that fits in that world and is a fun, fun game. If you're looking for something a little bit heavier, a little bit more content, then it's probably gonna be It's a Wonderful World for you by Lucky Duck Games. But nevertheless, this is a great game. I really enjoyed it. I'm gonna keep this game. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review the game uh, Age of Wonders Planetfall. If you're interested, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick up the game. And also, if you would like, you can hit that like button and the subscribe button and the bell notification button. I know those are extremely fun things to do that I do consistently as well. But if you're so inclined, we do appreciate it. Uh, you can also check out our live streams every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST. We play games literally just like this when we had this on our last one. Sadly, I reverted the camera but I didn't fully, I, I turned it, I mirrored it, but I forgot to mirror it both ways. So it looks a little funky. It's easy, I can still understand how the game works and whatnot, but it wasn't 
as perfect as I would have liked it to be. Regardless though, it's a good way to watch games. When you watch games and you watch people play them, see their interactions, see how the game interacts and how it works, it's a good way to determine if it's a game that you and your group, your play group will enjoy. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to venturing into the inner planets with you yet again next time.